Hi everyone. It's nice to see some uh, familiar names in the uh, the list of people who are already here. Hi Justina. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes because uh, not everyone that uh, has registered is uh, on board yet. All right, just a moment. I'm going to get a drink, but I'll be right back. Well, actually, good news. It was close. <laughs> I know, and don't worry, it's just water. I I love styrofoam cups for some reason, so I don't know. <laughs> I try to drink four of those a day, it's my measuring unit. <laughs> Hi Gavin. Okay, well, let's get started. Well, welcome everyone to the tonight's presentation. Um, hello. Just a, a, you know, really quick before we get started, one of the things that I would like to uh, kind of get some feedback on is I would like to start uh, talking about some of the ways that we can start reaching our target demographic. Because we can, you know, become very familiar with crypto, we can be able to speak about it conversationally and get very comfortable in that manner. But one of the things that I think is very important is now that people get comfortable, how do we get you in front of people that are going to make, you know, convert into a customer for you? So one of the things I would like to is uh, I put my email in the beginning of the chat and we can also take a poll. I can start one right here, but I would like to find out, uh, you know, what kind of programs or services that people are using to help find your, you know, customers, for example. Like, are you using Twitter, email campaigns, um, you know, Facebook, you know, different things like that. So let's put uh, marketing tools in here. And, oh, actually we've got, okay, Facebook. Okay, so now I put um, a couple of different options that we've got up here. So these are a lot of uh, kind of the standard methods that people do marketing for, you know, building their business. All right, we've got two answers so far, so. And if that means no one's using marketing stuff, we need to work on that in some of our presentations. <laughs> All right, four. We're, on, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, we're about at 35% of the attendees answering. So I'll give it just another moment and then I will kind of go from there. But what it looks like so far is that the only two things that are really being utilized are Facebook, but more so email campaigns than uh, Facebook. Okay, so that, I mean, it looks like we're probably uh, getting all the answers that we're gonna get there. And so that, um, We've got, uh, prop, well, a third of the people that um, answered, they're using Facebook. And uh, two-thirds are, well, the rest are using um, email campaigns. So I'm not sure if people are doing both, but to me what that says is that maybe that we need some training or some different um, help to get ourselves up to speed and how to use some of these tools to reach more people. And so... The way that I have always believed is that 90% of my income is going to come out of my sphere of influence. So if I want to make more money, I've got to make more influence. And by doing that, it's easier to use some of these uh, internet type 
um, platforms where I could easily get in front of people that I may not be able to uh, in person. And so uh, with Facebook, you know, it, that's it's pretty good. I mean, it, it does its part. And I in the beginning, it started just for people. And then from there, it grew to where it was supporting different businesses and trying to capitalize on some other markets because when they went public, they didn't have a way to make money. And so they had to turn the corner and they had to all of a sudden start adding in things that they could bill for. So with uh, that being said, Facebook was created for more of a friends and family type of intimate experience. But some of the other things that we're looking at, like Twitter and LinkedIn, um, they are very, very important in being able to communicate with business people, which is more in line with if you're building a business, maybe you want to have more business people involved in your downline so that you can, you know, have a better experience. And it sometimes takes less training to get people up to speed to help you in the way that you really need to be helped. So on Instagram, Instagram started more as like photography and things like that. And then it grew into what it is now. So that Instagram was more able to uh, adapt and grow. Uh, it actually is owned by Facebook. I don't know if anyone knows that. But with Instagram, uh, it's more of a picture says a thousand words. And uh, Twitter is more like, um, it's a, you can't have a very long message. So really, I mean, you can't type that much with it. So it's kind of like text messages on steroids, <laughs> which, so to speak. But it's really, really good for different marketing and things like that. Um, LinkedIn happens to be one of the ones I've used the most. And I have used it substantially in the past and in the beginning I was one of the early adopters and at one point I was in the top two percent of viewed profiles on LinkedIn when I was heavily engaged and using it in a marketing type of sense and um, since then I you know I, I have a different role and I do different things and I took some time off to I uh, do some painting and different so I had this beautiful work of art here and uh, anyways but I want to help you guys understand that there are a lot of tools that you can access for free to help you build your business and help you communicate to more people that are going to be you know hopefully in alignment with what you're um, trying to present them with okay so let's get started on the presentation and it's just okay uh, so the next gen token, I know we've talked about uh, how it was important for uh, Shop Free Mart to want to go into this space because having a having a really great store with a really great product line and the ability to have that as you know a business also as amazing as that is, it doesn't always appeal to every single person that you meet, unfortunately, because everybody should be as concerned with their health and well-being as we are. And to be effective in life, I believe it's very important to be balanced. So I need to be balanced in my personal health and also in my professional health. And to do that, I need to take care of myself and I need to give my body the ingredients that it needs for me to be successful. And so that's what the Shop Free Mart really like gears towards. It's it's helped me a lot um, get through different times in my life where I needed resources that you would help me be healthier. And I've had a lot of really good experiences with the product. So my experience and like when I talk about the products, it's more about how I've used them, my results, and that kind of a thing. So it's very much my personal story and, and how it helped me. Um, and now in knowing my, my dad is John Austin, by the way, so I've known about Shop Free Mart since it was a dream that he had. And literally he had a dream that was so powerful that he woke up and it changed his whole life and he had to make it happen. And so that's uh, the business that we're all involved in today. And it's been really amazing to watch it grow and see how it transitioned from a dream into something so amazing. And I've talked to him a lot during the time of, you know, growth and everything like that. And, you know, it's just been really amazing to have an opportunity where it's the perfect place at the perfect time. And, you know, I get a chance to work with him and help him make his dream a reality and just help us all grow and, and get more successful than we already are. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, the crypto industry and all of that technology, it's something that uh, my dad found out about and wanted to, you know, implement because it's something that it's something that's very unique. Um, like in the stock market, for example, if you're making, you know, 8% to 20%, you're average to crushing it. And uh, that doesn't really always offer the greatest opportunity for everyone to be, you know, um, to be where they want to be in a, I, I don't know, I wanted more. I wanted more results in a faster time period. And maybe that's, you know, be, being a little impatient, but I wanted something that um, I felt like I could have a little bit more control of, and it would be easier to learn than all of the things about the stock market. So when crypto came about, I got really excited about it. Um, I used to work in mobile technology, so it was pretty easy for me to jump back in. Um, I jumped out at web 2.0 and now it's at web three. So 
I was, you know, had a base understanding of a lot of different things. And uh, with that being said, you know, being like talking to my dad and knowing that he started, you know, what he was doing with Next Gen Token, it of course interested me because I've been very involved with crypto, doing a lot of testing on wallets and different programs and platforms. So it really, uh, it's been a lot of fun to come on board and I'm looking forward to all that we're gonna accomplish with the token. So anyways, it was part of the plan the entire time and it's very nice to see it coming into fruition and I'm happy that I'm part of it. <laughs> Okay, so cryptocurrency, um, one of the things that uh, we all know about money is that uh, it's it's got value to it. It's a store of value that we use to gauge our success and we use it to acquire the things that we need and also the things that we want. And so back in, you know, I mean, the beginning of history, if someone wanted something, they didn't have money. They had a cow and they had milk and they had, someone else had a chicken and they had eggs. And so a fair market exchange is whatever I think the milk is worth and whatever the person thinks the eggs are worth, we meet and we discuss and we make an agreement. So there's fair market value and it's an even trade, right? There's no, hey, I got messed up in this. So that's how things started becoming valuable. But, you know, if you want to go to a market and you want to go, you know, get more than just some eggs because people started organizing together and they would have things that were for sale um you know because more and people would come there so it's a you know a shopping mart so to speak so it's hard to take your cow it's hard to take your milk it's hard to take your eggs so people started um, agreeing that there would be certain tokens that would be a value that they could take with them and originally that was gold and you know i mean if you have a bunch of gold you probably don't want to be carrying it on you and going everywhere and, and putting yourself at risk of, you know, maybe it being taken from you. And it also, it's pretty heavy. So that was a lot of work. So when it started getting, um, so then they broke it into tinier pieces, made coins and tokens and things like that. And then, uh, you know, when, uh, when that was in the, you know, moving around, people would take a knife and they would cut a little part off. So what was supposed to be worth a certain thing, now it's kind of shaved off and it's not, it's supposed to be worth something, but it wasn't. And so to keep that from happening in risk mitigation, the money turned into paper because you can't really cut a piece of the paper off without somebody noticing immediately. And that's how we got to that currency. And so the money money was backed by gold originally because this unit of paper equals this unit of gold. And so it was a representation of the financial, uh, of the value that was backing it. It was just um, something that was easier to carry. And you know, pretty soon when people started getting a lot of those, well, what do you do with it? You have it at your house. Um, you know, uh, when you have things of value, that's, you sometimes have people that are trying to take it from you because they don't want to, or don't know how to create their own. And so, you know, people started, building banks and going in that manner because they needed somewhere safe to keep their money. And when people got, you know, farther along in technology, they started getting the internet and, you know, things became digitized. So I can deposit money electronically. I can get paid electronically and I can go into my bank electronically. And so that's a digital, a digital transaction. And all of those transactions are linked to my account and they're all in a chronological history from when they occurred all the way I mean, like every single thing, every record of everything that's ever happened with me and my value has a record and it's in the ledger. And so when we're talking about, you know, different ledgers and blockchain, on-chain, off-chain, essentially you can think about the chain, the blockchain as a history of value. So every single thing that has occurred to this unit of value and myself is recorded and it's not changeable because it's digital. And that makes, you know, things, uh, you know, very set in stone, so to speak. And um, as time progressed, you know, people start realizing that, hey, you know, there's banks that are taking a lot of money and there's all these hands that are getting in here and this takes so long and there's got to be a better solution than what we have right now. And that, um, you know, I mean, well, kind of going back a little bit, Elon Musk was about in the first cycle that I was aware of, which is two cycles ago, he was in the forefront of helping money be digitized. He was one of the founders of PayPal. And so PayPal was on the forefront of the cutting technology at that time. And being able to have access to your money through your phone or through the internet was huge because you don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to go when they're open and plan everything around that and drive and all those, you know, cumbersome things like leave the house. But uh, so, 
it was really amazing to see how he was taking that to a next level. And then it unfolded to where I can use my mobile device or my internet so that I can send and receive money, you know, transactionally. And putting the ability to have transactions in my own hands gave me power, gave me power to do things that I wasn't able to do before. And, you know, and that evolved into so much more. So a 10 year life cycle, it's, well, it's kind of like real estate. Real estate life cycle is about 10 years. And so it goes the same with uh, certain kinds of technology. And um, in technology, it's probably, I mean, right now it's probably the 10 year cycles that I'm talking about, some of them run probably 13, 14 years, but it's a rough 10 years. That's the, the uh, investment cycle, so to speak. So uh, at, at 20 years ago, PayPal came about and 10 years ago, uh, Bitcoin came about. So Bitcoin, we don't know who made it. Um, there are suspicions, but nobody really knows. And so there's someone who invented the idea, hey, we should be able as people to have control of our money. We should be able to have this be anonymous and decentralized, and we should be able to have something that isn't backed by a promise. So as we know, with fiat currency, that's uh, you know what we have right now. And the governments that we have, our government, there was a, a, a money used to be backed by gold and a president changed that. And so now money is backed by a promise that the government will pay back, will, will trade them that unit of paper for whatever is valuable. And um, I mean, I would love to be able to go to Fort Knox and say, hey, I would like to give you this dollar and I would like a dollar of gold, but that's not gonna happen. And so the all of the, currency right now is just backed by a promise. And some of the things that, that are complicated about that is everybody else's economy is tied to the United States. It's tied to the US dollar. So if we have any issues here, we can drastically and detrimentally affect an entire country's economy based on our volatility. And that's not fair to anyone else. So if I want to do remittance, which is sending a family member money, for example, and I'm in, in uh, Arizona, and I want to send money to um, Texas, or, or sorry, not Texas, but Mexico. I've got to go across a country's border. And money has a border right now, and we all have borders. And uh, to do that, it's going to take several days, and it's also going to take several fees, because there's so many different companies that have to be involved to validate my transaction and make sure that it's happening. So I have my bank, which my money is in a digital format, and then I um, have to put it on a a network, so to speak, and send it to Mexico. And when my family member takes it out, because of the bank and the uh, gateways and also like MoneyGram or whoever else is involved, there's so many fees that it roughly is about a fifth of that. So, you know, for, for sending $100, it probably is going to cost 20 bucks. And that means a lot of the money that was going to go to a family member who probably needs it really badly, they're not going to be able to access as much money as I'm trying to send them. But there's no other alternative because those are the fees that we have to pay. We have to grease all the hands that are sticking out for us to do what we want with that. And it takes a long time. It takes at least sometimes three to seven days because those transactions all have to be validated. It has to be validated and settled, which means that everybody, all banks and all financial institutions have to agree that that transaction, transaction doesn't exist anywhere else so that somebody doesn't get more money than they should. And so when the person finally gets the money on the other end, it's in the US dollar and they have to do an exchange into their own native currency. And if the market has been very volatile in that time period, they could lose even more money. Like let's say the value of the dollar was $3, you know, and then all of a sudden it goes down, well, in conversion ratio, but it goes down and then all of a sudden they have even less money than what they were gonna have before. And that's, um, it's really hard for people on the other end that really need it. And it's hard for people who are sending money, especially if they barely have enough to send because they're trying to do a good thing, but there are so many consequences because of all the hands in the pile. And to get around that, um, was kind of the concept in ways of what, you know, kind of part of why Bitcoin was made. So being able to take the control of our own money back and being able to take those the transaction fees back, then we're able to have more of our value and we don't have to share as much just to perform actions that we need to do. And so, uh, that, so there's centralized, which means everything is a centralized location. And then there's decentralized, which means it, there, it, there isn't. And 
everything is moving over to decentralized, which means I'm going to have the power to do to be the bank. If it's my money, I can have the power to stake it somewhere in essence and loan it. Um, I have the power to send it on a network that is everybody's connected to. So it's not going to depend on the value of anybody's currency. It's going to be me buying in on a token that gets onto a network and then it goes over to where it needs to be. And then they pull it out in that token and it, into their native um, format. And so it saves a lot of money. It's pretty much instant. And the transaction fees are minuscule in comparison. So there's a lot of wins from that. And, um, you know, but this is also taking a lot of money out of the hands of the banks and financial institutions like let's say Morgan Stanley or you know pick any large bank probably you know three to four billion dollars easily was was given to them from regular people last year just to perform cross-border transactions and that's a lot of money and so the banks are going to be fighting that because they're like hey you're taking a piece of our pie that we you know we get all this money for hardly doing anything except passing something up you know to the next person essentially and so you know there's a little bit of a they're trying to fight that and but the people right now we've got abilities to get around that that we have we have more power than sometimes you know, you know businesses want us to have because we're saying hey we want to be in charge we want to be in charge of our own money we want to be in charge of our own lives and make our own decisions and not have to pay all of these consequences if we don't have to so being able to be involved in cryptocurrency, that's what we get is we get a, a form of money, a form of value. It's, it's called a store of value. Anything that is uh, that exists that is valuable, it's storing value. So nothing is valuable unless you and I both agree that it is. And so uh, if Bitcoin right now, it's, I mean, between forty and fifty thousand dollars a token. But there was a time period where it was like maybe not even a penny in value. And so. In the last 10 years, the people that believed in it in the beginning and the people that really came together as a community and pushed and made it popular, they changed the entire world. They changed the way that all of us are doing business. They changed the way that all of us are doing everything. And being able to have some kind of unit of value that we can transfer back and forth to each other and still maintain that value, that's really powerful. And that hasn't happened before because no one has had the same money globally. It's all been you know, backed by US dollar. So I guess it kind of is the same, but but it's not the same. So with Bitcoin, what happened is that, you know, there's the concept of like, okay, well, how are we gonna do this? If we don't want, you know, to have to go to these banks and have all these hands in the pie and taking a big chunk of our money, how are we gonna get around that? How, because if you, you know, if you have a problem, you go to your bank and you're somebody that you trust, a relationship that you trust, you can go to that entity or person and say, hey, I have a problem. How do we fix this? So there's a there's an interaction and a set trusted relationship between the two of us. But with Bitcoin, for example, there isn't. It was created by an anonymous person and all of the code and everything for it are written by a community of people and it's done by governance. So governance means there's a group of people, a community that governs the decisions that they have rolling forward. So everyone has to agree before something happens. And I mean, I guess that's truly democracy. So it, it brought the concept of democracy and value together. And once it started becoming uh, accepted, the perception of value has definitely increased. And so as more people start seeing the technology and they start seeing how many ways it can be used and benefit the world as a whole, it's become more accepted and uh, is now even you know, a, a currency in several countries. Not the United States because I mean, Part of my personal opinion on that is, I mean, the government doesn't really have a lot of uh, ways to track it and uh, tax it. So, you know, everybody, <laughs> everybody wants a piece. And so uh, that's one of the things that that uh, Bitcoin was trying to, you know, solve the problem with that. So if there's no trusted relationship to be had to verify the transactions, there had to be a different way to do it. So the concept became, well, if there's bits of information all over the Internet, and you have computers that go out and search the internet and it's asking every single thing it connects to a question and that question is a very complex mathematical formula that if the answer is yes it will unlock the next piece of data that is the block in the chain that has to be solved for the progress to go forward and so that's um it's called proof of work the proof to for the transaction to work you have to have proof that it is correct 
And so it's validating every single block of data from the time that it was made all the way until it's being used now. And with all the adoption that we have with it globally, that's quite a lot of information. And so right now you can only validate a couple of transactions per second. And if you think about different technologies that are out there that can do 300,000 a second versus maybe eight, that's a huge difference in speed. And we're all pretty impatient. So the, we, we keep paying more to get things validated and, and get our way with certain things, which keeps increasing the price and the transaction fees you know, on that part of, of the transaction. So when banks and stuff got out of the way, then we needed something to validate the transaction. And those are called the miners or you pay gas or gas fees. But what that means is you have a, an into something that is validating the transaction so you can move forward and they're charging a fee for their part of the work. And because it is so time consuming, they are able to charge quite a bit. And if people wanna speed that process up because they don't wanna wait an hour, then they offer more money to pay for gas to get it done. And so it goes up and up and up and up and up because people are now bidding to get something done faster. So the gas fees are insane. So um, there was a time that like you could buy a $4 cup of coffee and it would cost you $20 in transaction fees to get a $4 cup of coffee. And I mean, Starbucks, when they went from a $1 cup of coffee as a standard to a four, I was like, what on earth? Like, that's ridiculous. How I can't even imagine that. Like I was like, anti just by principle alone but now i'm used to it i'll go to starbucks if i want to and i don't even think about it and coffee that used to be 99 cents or a dollar is not anymore so it really increases the price because we're now accepting the amount of value in certain things so if i want something to be done faster and i'm willing to pay for it it's going to increase the cost all the way around because if you if you want something you have to now get into that bidding war so to speak and um for I think like probably an average of every month, there's like um, 1.2 billion or something like that, or more that's being paid out on a monthly basis to the miners so that they can solve the transaction history so that I can get my transaction done. And this is not environmentally sustainable. And it's kind of annoying because as humans, we are impatient. And uh, so with all of the, with all of the things that we're thinking about as our world is, you know, getting hotter and we've got climate issues and things that all of us need to be aware of, environmental sustainability is something all of us need to think about. And so even though there is no one that owns Bitcoin, the process that it uses, beautiful concept, and it changed the entire world. And it made cryptocurrency essentially acceptable as a form of payment and a transactionable unit of value that's digital. And the the concept of that is it's pretty amazing. And Elon Musk, 20 years ago, two cycles ago, he is the one that helped digitize money and digitize and put things back into the hands of people. And now 20 some odd years later, he's the one that pushed the entire world to accept Bitcoin. He bought a whole bunch of it with Tesla and he, to prove a point, he sold it at a profit. And that alone is what made in, well, I shouldn't say that alone. My opinion is that is what made him profitable on his books for the first time in probably the history of his company um and that and that you know the, the ability to do that it showed the entire world that this is a viable store of value and it's everybody started wanting it and it, since then all these banks and institutions and everybody it's like they want to have part of it and so the price of it's been going up and up and up and up because of the scarcity and and so conceptually it really changed the world in a lot of big ways and elon musk is I don't know. I mean, I think that's his superpower to change the world, but it really is amazing to watch it from, you know, the 20 years that I was, you know, in, in the technology and the industry from one element or another to see how everything has changed and be able to bring all of that knowledge and um, just understanding of things to the group and be able to communicate that to the community and get all of us up to speed so that we can be conversationally fluent about cryptocurrency so that we can communicate the value of what it is that we're actually looking at as a company. And um, so that's, um, so I mean, everybody's probably read the screen now for the last several minutes, but um, so this is an example. So in 2010, you know, roughly 10 years ago, you could buy Bitcoin for five cents each. And if it got, if you invested a thousand dollars, you'd be worth 500 million. And you know, if people have the, the strength to hold on for that investment life cycle and not panic and sell, wow. That's a lot of value that was capitalized on if the person was able to make it all the way through without cap without cashing out.
And so many people, they get into something and they, you know, people are scared of volatility and they don't understand what it is that they're buying, what it is that they need to do or the investment life cycle. People buy a lot of things without doing research or knowing what it is. Just they're doing it because it's FOMO, fear of missing out. And fear of missing out on something usually means that you're not educated enough. You will miss out because you're, you're going to panic, panic buy, panic sell. And that's, that's not a way to make a living or an investment or a lifestyle. You have to have certain rules and you have to follow them. And some of the rules that are very specific is you have to hold for specific sets of time because of the investment life cycle of what you're doing. And so with that being said, that, um, okay, we've got over the blockchain. Where are we at? Yeah, yeah, here we go. So then that's what we're talking about here with the smart contract. So the smart contracts that you hear a lot about it's smart because well, there's going to make us some money, but uh, we've, we're talking about a term of 18 months. And with the fluctuation and the volatility of cryptocurrency, you have to average it out. You have to have your, it's a cost average. So if I, if my thing is, okay, I'm going to, I'm, this is, this is my plan. So I'm not a financial invest, invest or advisor, and this is not financial advice. I'm giving you my story and what I do and what has worked for me. So what I like to do is I like to set up a plan where I'm, within my means and it's reasonable and it's um it's going to be something that if i live by my rules i'm going to have an expectation that is typically uh typically reached so let's say for example if uh i'm going to do 50 dollars a week every single week i'm going to put 50 dollars in without fail how high how low doesn't matter and so 50 dollars a week after 52 times of doing that there's going to be times where it was high times where it was low and because there's an average of, I take the average of the high and the low, and whatever is in the middle is going to be the average cost during that whole entire time period. And that's your cost average. So the times where it's really low, uh, you know, I would just stay, you know, in the beginning, I was like, oh, should I, ugh. but I kept my rule and I said, nope, I'm going to do this exactly how I said I would. I'm going to prove this point to myself and just to, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to. And I tell you what, like I probably bit all my fingernails off and, you know, was on the edge of my seat sometimes when things crashed, but I stayed. And I got to the point where I started seeing, oh, okay, well, if I do this, hmm, if I'm buying at the top, it's not, it's like buying something full price. But if it goes down, and I know that I'm not, my set period of time that I have, that I rule I made with myself is not going to be for a year, like 18 months in this specific case. If I know that I have to hold for that long, then I'm like, okay, there's sometimes it's high up here. And I know it's going to be okay for me if I do that, because it's going to average out. But when it's low, I thought I thought about it and I was like, hmm, this is on sale. I haven't seen this much of a sale in a long time. And so then I would sometimes double down and buy more at the bottom, but I always kept buying my specific set thing every single week. And what's really important is don't live outside your means. Don't put money in that you can't live without. And that you have to take care of yourself now so that you can be okay when, when it's time to, to um, cash out. Uh, you don't want to struggle. That just causes, you know, stress on your body and stress on your family and it's not a lot of fun. So being able to like be, you know, have a set a set goal like that is one of the things that are really critical. And with that being said, um, being in the smart contract, what that is, is you're entering into a, a contract and you, you know that it's going to be volatile. You know that the market is going to fluctuate. And if you were going to do this on your own, you would need to be able to understand the timing of the market. And I mean, I, I learn about this all the time and I still don't know. It's how am I going to guess that what the market's going to do at any given time? I can't know all the information of everything, even though I try. Uh, but with that being said, this kind of this kind of contract, I know that I'm locking in and I know that it's longer than a year. And I know that if I stay in for a year, my average return is going to be over 200%. But it's not going to be if I don't because of the cost averaging. So if I uh, if I panic because things went down, well, then I just sold everything and I lost all the money. That was the difference between where I bought it and where I sold it. All of that is going to go down the toilet and I don't want to flush my money down the toilet anymore. I want to keep it and I want to capitalize and achieve that, you know, the, the fruits of my labor, so to speak. So if the contract is 18 months, that's a really good time period. That's going to give enough time for a really good cost average. And you're, you're not going to be, you know, uh, subjected to the volatility of the market in a negative way because you don't have the ability to plan the timing of the market of where to get in and where to get out. I mean, maybe you do, maybe, maybe 
who knows somebody could be, have that ability and if you do please share it with a group but for me i i don't know all that information and i'm human so i get scared sometimes and if i see everybody selling i'm like ah oh i should sell too and it's fear of missing out and it sometimes it's missing out of losing and i don't want to lose i don't want to lose my money i don't want to lose my opportunities and so having an 18 months uh, a smart contract that's awesome i'm gonna have i'm i, I have to like know that I'm going to get through it no matter what, right? But what we're talking about here is if we're talking about the value of a token being 10 cents and you have that for the whole entire time period and at the end of it, it goes up to a dollar. That means 90 cents for every single coin or token that you have, that's yours. And that's, that's awesome. So you, you uh, get those capital gains from 10 cents, the spread from 10 cents to a dollar so that's a 90 cent spread that you get to keep just because you had, it's in the industry, it's called diamond hands. So if you have diamond hands and you're not gonna let go and you're gonna ride through the hard parts because you know at the end of it, there's gonna be great parts again pretty soon. If you can do that, then you're gonna achieve the gains that you're looking for. And so being able to get through that and have those the gains, that's amazing all on its own. But one of the rewards that we have for the smart contracts is you're also getting bonus tokens. So at the end of the 18 month contract, if you, so if you put in, let's say just we're throwing numbers out, if you buy a thousand next gen coins and it costs you $67 and 33 cents at the end of 18 months, you would, would have received 2,928 coins that's added to the, the original ones that you bought. And that's your reward for collateralizing a contract. You're collateralizing a contract and that contract is helping the entire network work grow and become something better. The, the world is changing and it's changing around us. And there's all these entrepreneurs that are familiar with the technology and they are doing things that they want to change the world with. So we're in an opportunity where it's kind of like being a shark on Shark Tank because we have the opportunity to say, hey, my money is going to enter into a contract and I'm going to collateralize something that's going to help other people, whether it's the network or it's developers, it's going to help people achieve their goals. So I'm collateralizing someone else's dream and it's going to help me build my own in the same time. And so I get rewarded heavily for that because if it's a startup, for example, and they don't have the money to do what they need to do, a bank won't give them a loan, they're maxed out on their credit cards, they're not going to be able to bring that really cool idea or thing to life and everybody's going to miss out on it. So we're giving the opportunity to people and to be able to bring things that they're working on to us and it's going to be so much more beneficial because we're going to achieve not only the good things that are developed because of it, but we also get rewarded heavily to be there for them during that during that time period when nobody else was there for them. So if we have now we're talking about, you know, we've got three thousand nine hundred and twenty eight coins and I paid sixty seven dollars and thirty three cents for that. Um, now that's worth three hundred and ninety two dollars and eighty cents. That's that's almost six hundred percent of gains. Like that's a pretty, I mean, I don't know of anywhere in the entire world that anyone can get that kind of return on an investment. You can't get it in the stock market. You can't get it by buying gold. You can't get it from, I, I don't even know. I mean, gambling, whatever, but you can't, I don't know of anywhere that that can happen. And so right now, because we are at the forefront of the fourth industrial revolution, we have the opportunity to participate in things like this. So this is like being with Bitcoin back in the day. You could buy it for five cents. And the people that saw the value in it, that participated, they are very well rewarded. And Bitcoin made more millionaires in such a short period of time than anything else that I know of. And we have opportunities to do our own version of that. And that's what that's what the smart contracts are for. We're building a whole new world. And so if if we keep going back to the same concept of that I paid $67.33 for a thousand coins. If the price of those goes up, if the value of them goes from 10 cents to a dollar, then now we're looking at 3,928, which is a 5,833% gain. And you know what? I, uh, I kind of like that. I mean, that's a really, that's a great opportunity for me. I, and I didn't know of anything that was like almost, you know, 583%. And now it could be that much more. And so the way that we can go from 10 cents up to a dollar is we as a community, we can participate in it. We can tell people about it. We can get everybody excited. And so scarcity is something that humans are addicted to. We cannot live without it. It's, it's what we crave. And so 
we have a set amount of tokens, we have a set amount of coins, there's not going to be any more than we've agreed to create, which means at some point, hmm, there might not be enough for everybody. So that increases the value and the perception of value of that specific thing of value. And so if we are, as a community, we come together and we talk about things, we invite people, we get them excited about coming and doing the same thing that we're doing and showing provable success with, then that's going to create more activity and more people are going to buy. And so if you can imagine like a, here's, you know, a river, uh, an ocean and we've got, um, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. My screen was kind of going down. But uh, so if we have, if we have an ocean and we have a guy that's on a surfboard and he's out over here and, you know, it, it, this is kind of where we are right now. I'm like, oh yeah, this is great. And, you know, kind of things are moving up and we're making some progress. And I get as much as I can right now. Then when everybody else buys, uh, buys and buys and buys and buys and buys, you know, it's not that this is going to go lower, it's going to push me up higher because this is a bigger stack. So I'm pushed up and up and up. And this is called a wealth wave. So if you're here and you get in at the ground floor before everyone else, it's like pre IPO. You're buying into something before it's launched on the stock market. And then everybody else is going to find out about it, get involved. And every single time it goes up, you're going to be way at the top. And all of this is just going to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And you get all of the benefits of all of that. And you bought in at the beginning. So what you got that contract at and what you own the tokens at is cheaper than anyone could possibly get it for ever again. And that's why that this is really important and why getting in at the ground level is very important because at some point that's not ever going to happen again. Um, you know, you can't go just because you want to, you can't go pay five cents for a Bitcoin unless somebody is willing to like give that up. But if you do find that, please email me directly because I would like one of those. <laughs> but um, all, all kidding aside, this is this is an opportunity that I've been waiting for for my whole entire life. I have, I'm pretty good at like being able to see things as they're coming and because I know so much about different industries and different kinds of, I mean, I'm like the random category on Jeopardy some days, but being able to like see some of those things coming is really, really, really beneficial because I, when I talk to my dad and I get what this is and I get how awesome it is and I, you know, I, I was like, hey, I started working before I was even hired. It was that exciting to me. And I am really passionate about crypto and the opportunities that it has opened up for me as a human being. And when being part of this project and being able to see, okay, I know right where we are and I know right where we, we could go. And if we all come together and we work on that as a goal and we get the word out and we really just strive to work together as a whole, we are going to make something that nobody else is going to be able to compete with. And we're going to be in at a point that everyone else is going to be jealous of. Well, of course, because we're going to be, we're at the forefront. So we're at the forefront of the fourth industrial revolution. And we're at the forefront of some amazing, amazing technology. And we're at the point where we can benefit substantially from it. And so I hope that helps kind of understand, uh, understand like the smart contracts and, you know, how they work. Uh, why they came about um, and then uh, okay so a currency exchange uh, a currency exchange that's um, essentially a, a company that is going to exchange one thing for another and if you go to your bank you can change pesos and dollars and that's a foreign exchange well this is kind of it's similar in concept this is a digital exchange so I'm exchanging one digital for a different digital and the value of each of them is going to sort itself out for I have X amount of this and for that I'm gonna get X amount of this and I'm gonna pay X as a conversion fee from this to that so that's where gas fees and you know the that's the transaction fees of what you would pay for your bank and uh, being able to have a currency exchange that's going to open up even more opportunities for us. That's going to be when that's done, that is when the coin is actually going to be launched. So right now we are at pre-launch. This is like buying, having stock in a company before it even goes to the exchange to NASDAQ or anything like that. We, I, Coinbase, for example, um, the company that helped them launch, if I was an accredited investor and I had at least $10,000 that I wanted to pop down on Coinbase, I could have gotten it for $14 a share pre-IPO. And on its very first day, it, I think, hit over a 400. And right now it's still like at least mid to 250s or more. And so if that's how you can kind of like gauge how this is working. So for the stock market, it's called an IPO. For crypto, it's ICO, initial coin offering. And 
that's where we are. We haven't launched yet, but we're able to know what's happening and we're able to get in at the very best, most profitable time that anybody could get involved with anything. And the exchange is going to help that launch and make us even more money because we're going to be accessible to the public. We're going to have our own wallets. We're going to have all of the coins in there. And we're going to be just like, um, you know, uh, uh, any other uh, currency exchange that's online, the digital stuff. So it's going to make it's going to make the value of what we're working on even more than it is right now. Um, and so this, so the, the interest-free loans, I get a lot of questions about this actually. And to kind of think about it in one way, um, if I'm, if I'm doing my investment strategy and I'm putting in $50 a week and that's religiously, then that means I could get any price point wherever the value is set on that given week. If that's what I'm buying it at and that's what it's set at. But let's say that I really wish I had $10,000 that I could just go boom and invest because I want to get it at this super cheap price because I know in my heart that this is going to go to the moon and I'm going to just, I, I have to have more of this right now. And I, I mean, I, I get that. I, I'm speaking of my personal feelings. So <laughs> I do feel that way. I want as much as I can get right now because I know the value of where it's going and where it can go to. So me wanting to have all of that right now, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm either going to have, if I don't have the money myself, if I'm not liquid enough to do that, then I've got to talk to my credit card company. I've got to talk to my bank, my credit union, my family, and all these things. And they're going to charge me interest. They're going to have leverage on what I'm doing. And, you know, somebody will have leverage, but I'm going to have to pay interest and that's going to eat into my profit. And, you know, maybe I don't want to have anybody eating into my profit. I want that all for myself. And so the only way to do that is to have the money now to buy in at a specific set rate because it's not going to stay at the same dollar value it is right now. It's going to go up and up and up. And so um, leverage, for example, uh, let's talk about the housing for a second. So leverage is when I borrow money to buy something and the value of what I bought is worth less than what I borrowed. Then that means the owner of what I borrowed uh, whatever I bought with what I borrowed can come back to me and say, you know what, uh, what I what I gave you is worth more than what you're using as collateral, so I want my money back. And then they can call the house due. You have to give the house back. That's leverage. Someone else can um, in, be involved in your ownership because you don't technically own it at that point. And so to be able to get around that, we're saying, okay, you know, we value every single member and how are we going to like help people get the most out of what we can do as a whole so if people everybody i know right now i mean the people that i know that have a lot of money right now they made it in crypto and all of the successes they have because they had bitcoin or something like that and they are doing very well and most of the other people that i know they're not they're struggling because everything that they were involved in kind of went sideways you know, people lost their jobs, people had to stay home, they couldn't work, you know, they had to make all of these decisions that they've sacrificed things for their family and they, they you know, it, it's been a hard time for a lot of people. And so to, uh, to get around that, um, how, what are we going to do? How are we going to go from where we are to where we want to be in the best way possible for everyone involved? And so the concept of an interest-free loan is unheard of in a lot of, in, in so many ways, like why would somebody give me money and they're not going to get anything out of it. I'm tying up their money, right? I'm tying up their money for, and they benefit zero. So I don't know anybody that's going to do that for me. And this is something that we're offering all of the members. And you don't have to have your credit ran or anything like that. You're getting an interest-free loan. So what's happening is your loan that you're getting is essentially like you're getting a contract that says, hey, I own this many coins slash tokens. And by the way, Coins and token, they mean the same thing. So it's, it's just two different ways of saying the same uh, thing. Um, so if I want a whole bunch of tokens and I want them at 10 cents, I've got to lock in at 10 cents. And if I don't have the cash to do that, I've got to figure out a way so that I can. And so right now, there are two ways that you can do that. You can do that by referring somebody who buys their own smart contract, and, every, and then you get 10% of whatever they do when they do it. So if you, you know, if it, somebody buys $1,000, you get 10% of that as your reward for bringing them to the table. And that's what you get in, in your pile now. You get that many tokens as a bonus, as a reward for, for doing that. And the other way would be to uh, um, do an interest-free loan. 
And so what that means is it's also a contract and we get it, we essentially hold the contract for you, but you pay for it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis or whatever. And, but instead of paying to buy in on a new contract every week, you're buying in on one contract and then you're paying for it as every week goes. So it's more like layaway without interest. So, I mean, this, yeah, I mean, this is more like layaway than it would be a loan. So the coins are here and you have, you get all of them in a contract at your specific buy-in rate, which is amazing. And then you're going to get all of the gains all the way through to where the value goes up. So when it goes from 10 cents to a dollar, you own all of that because it's your coins. You know, it's your, if I go to Walmart and put a bicycle on layaway, it's my bicycle and I can get it back whenever I pay for it. I, I get, it's mine if they're just holding it until I pay for it. So I'm making in, incremental payments until it's done. And then when the, when it's done being paid, then I can, I get to um, take it, I get um, ownership of it. You know, I get to take ownership personally. So that's how you can kind of think about this is it's, it's being able to get in at the, at a very, very amazing rate. And then you get it like, benefit from all of it at the end. And um, so this uh, right now, let's see, sorry, sometimes I get ahead of myself a little bit. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I hope that this kind of explains how it actually works. So it's, you know, you don't have to have your credit ran or anything like that. It's conceptually more like a layaway and you're going to benefit all the way through from wherever you lock in to wherever it goes. Okay, so here's just kind of a little uh, screen showing some of the different ways that there's an ability to, um, you know, like the environment, the 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 environment of the economy for shop shop free mart and uh, the next gen opportunity. So with so with next gen, we our focus is on e-commerce, and so with everything going to a digital environment, and I mean, if you go to any shopping mall or strip mall, where are those companies? Who's selling all the things that used to be at those stores? People couldn't leave the house, so everybody started shopping online. Well, if you're shopping online and all of these stores like no longer have to have a brick and mortar physical store for you to access them and be their customer, well, then you don't. It takes a lot of like some of the expenses out of the way. But I might not be able to go to somewhere that has a physical location to get something that I want. So that means e-commerce. So it's electronic commerce and it's digital. So you have to have digital money to pay digitally for a tangible good through an electronic way that is going to be sent to you for you to receive. So that's kind of the, the difference of you drive to the store, you buy it, you take it home. And it's just a different way of getting the same result that we were trying to do. You know, you just, you got to work around some things sometimes. And um, one of the things that's really amazing that I really enjoy is this is like in conjunction with, you know, what we're doing with Shop Free Mart. So Shop Free Mart is not going to go away. The products aren't going to go away. Nothing is going to change in that capacity. But this is, so the way that I look at things is not everybody wants to be healthy. Not everybody is in, interested in having a side hustle, which is, you know, what, what it would be called. If you have a business on the side, the new terminology for it is a side hustle. This is what you're interested in. This is what you're doing. So not everybody wants to do that kind of stuff. And you can, you can have the best water in the world and you could drag a horse to it, but you're not going to be able to make it drink no matter how perfect it is for the horse and how much it needs it. It just doesn't know it needs it. So with that being said, it's not always easy to show people the value in something that is valuable that they could benefit from if they're not open to it. And the, where we are with crypto, this is something, this is another tool in the toolkit. Crypto is something that everybody has heard of, they're interested in, and they probably want to get involved with it. So you don't have the, the same barriers to entry for your business that you would if you're just doing your straight business. This is another way for you to earn and create passive revenue and have financial freedom and also like build generational wealth. So building generational wealth is building uh, an environment that can benefit everybody going forward. So poverty is one thing that we want to get away from. Poverty is a mindset. And poverty is something that's passed down generationally. And, you know, when you think about it, it's really sad that the most brilliant people, depending on where they're born, they might not ever get to achieve their greatness or even like become what they're supposed to, you know, what they're supposed to do for the world if they don't have the opportunity. And the opportunity is usually held back by the person themselves because of their belief system. And so poverty, in my opinion, it, it boils down to not understanding or knowing the concept of ownership. So the concept of ownership is if I buy something now at a low price, I'm going to own it for a while. And then when I sell it, I'm going to get even more for it. 
So I'm going to benefit all the way through and I'm going to benefit even more at the end because I'm going to be amassing my value and I'm something I can pass on. But understanding the concept of value it is, is something that's very important, but understanding ownership is even well, equally, if not more important, because if I don't know what it's like to own something, I don't, I don't open up to the concept of it, and I can't pass that down to people. I live in a sense of poverty because I don't know how to make changes, and I don't know how to get from point A to point B, because I don't know how to buy something low and sell high so that I can level up and get out of my situation. And so there's sometimes the most intelligent people and because of, you know, maybe they're born in the wrong zip code. They didn't get an opportunity. No one spoke to them enough. They don't understand that they can get out of that because they don't see a path through the weeds. They don't know how to get from point A to point B, but they can see it a lot of times. They, oh, I can see it's one inch away from me, but I don't know how to cross the threshold of that. And so that's, um, that's something that this really like is able to like, give that concept to so many more people because people want to know more about crypto. It's such a mystery. I mean, look at, you know, how much did you know about crypto before I started talking to you about it? And I hope that the way that I'm explaining some of these things is, you know, taking a lot of the mystery out of it. But if, if somebody doesn't know something, you can't know it. You can't be in trouble for not knowing it. You know, you just, all you can do is try to learn the concept and try to find some way to understand it so that you yourself can figure it out and benefit from it. And you can pass that knowledge on to your family and, and all of the generations to come. And, you know, this is this is such a wonderful opportunity to be able to do that. And the target demographic that we all have, you know, for the crypto space, it's somebody that can fog a mirror, really, you know. And so it doesn't matter if it's a grandma, a grandpa, a kid, you know, people want to know about this and they understand because they see all of how much money other people are making. They have FOMO. They're missing out and they know it. And cryptocurrency, my favorite part about what we're doing right now is this is not a rich person thing. This is not a poor person thing. It's not going to happen only to rich people. This is an everyone opportunity. Everyone can do this. Even if it's $50 a week, everyone can do this. It doesn't limit anyone at all. And because of that, it's able to reach so many more people than, than, I, than we can even imagine. And that's the beautiful part about what we're working on right here is we have the ability to give people who desperately need sometimes a, a, just a hand to pull them out of the darkness and say, hey, here's something that you can do to save your life. Others, you know, and I don't mean life as in like life and death, but like the quality of life is important. And, you know, so many people, the quality of their life has gone so downhill and they're so depressed and all they need is something to bring them back to life and to believe in and to give them hope so that they can, you know, do what they're meant to do with life. And, and this is something that I'm very passionate about and I want to help people understand it so that you can communicate how valuable this opportunity is to people that you meet or anything like that. And, and I really, um, I hope that this is helping with uh, kind of some of those concepts. And I know we're kind of getting close to an hour, so I, I probably won't go into any of the, like, the products and things like that. But I will let you know that we do have some really great announcements coming up of some more products that are going to be in, this, in, in the Shop Mart or Shop Free Mart family. So please stay tuned for that. We're going to have a lot of really amazing uh, things to talk about in that area. And um, please, if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, definitely put it in the chat or uh, reach out to me directly by email. But I wanted to say thank you so much to everybody for coming and I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great night. Oh, before I end really quickly, uh, there is a, you will get a follow-up email to this presentation. And in there, it will say, it will be a green button that says replay. And when you click on that, you're able to see the recorded version of this. And so you're able to watch it again if you want to. And you're also able to share that with other people so that they can also benefit from the information. But please invite people you know, because I have to say, Every single one of these is going to be a mystery. I'm going to be talking about something different and it's all going to be some pretty fun stuff. So I really appreciate everyone and I'm glad you joined me tonight and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.